All right, today I'm working on uh, 4L80E out of probably about an 05 Chevy truck. And a couple of things that I like to do as a standard rebuild procedure when I build the 4L80Es, uh, one of them is to install a shift kit. And the shift kit that I actually like on the 4L80Es is the superior one. I'll give you a close-up shot of this. Um, one time, a guy brought me a 4L80E over the counter. He wanted me to build it performance. So he, he actually bought a core and then gave me a list of parts that he wanted installed in it. <clears throat> and one of them was this shift kit for the 4L80E. And uh, installing the shift kit, I thought it's a, you know, it's a real nice kit, uh, fairly simple to install. So ever since then, I've been starting to, uh, ever since then, I've been installing that particular kit in all four LADEs I do. All right, the other thing that I like to do is a standard rebuild procedure, which I have a video on already, is the oversized actuator feed limit valve. That core likes to wear out, and that kit is a transco kit. I have it here, I'll, I'll show you that as well. Um, pretty much what happens there, the bore, likes to wear out and the actuator feed limit valve is responsible to get the oil to the shift solenoids and to the shift valves. And when it gets real, real hot, that's kind of a classic sign, you know, the bore is worn out. When it gets real, real hot, it may like fall out of fourth gear, not set any codes. So I had one here one time. Uh, we do a lot of, uh, we have accounts that uh, uh, do road service and things like that. Uh, that's what this particular truck is uh, is for. And these people would go all over uh, Long Island, uh, wherever they were sent. And one time the truck, uh, they had to go all the way out east. And after driving the truck for about an hour, uh, it wouldn't go into fourth gear anymore. It fell out, it wouldn't go back in. So um, driving it locally, it worked fine, but for a length of time. Uh, so they called us up and I said, yeah, I think I know what's going on with that. So we ended up doing an overhaul because it was a, a road service truck anyway. And they wanted that and I put the actuator feed limit valve in at the oversized one and, and that fixed the problem. So those are the two standard things I like to do, uh, standard rebuild procedure, you know, other than, you know, the banner kit and, and, and this transmission likes to uh, eat bushings. So I put, uh, changed the bushings in this transmission and when it's all said and done, with all this stuff, it, it works real nice. So, what we're gonna do uh, is I have everything set up and we're gonna install the Superior Ship Kit. And, you know, it's builder's preference or whoever's working on a car preference if you wanted to do this or not. But what I would suggest that you do, even if you don't wanna put a shift kit in it, when I get to the point, I'll tell you, the boost valves on these like to wear out, which can cause uncontrollable line pressure breaking parts, stuff like that. And also there's a, um, an end plug at the end of the pressure regulator valve. This one wasn't leaking, but a lot of times I, I check it, I put uh, oil and then I air check the valve and a lot of times you see the blow by from the, uh, going through the end plug. This particular one wasn't leaking, but they also sell an O-ringed an end plug um, in a kit. So you can, like Sonic sells the, the boost valve with O-rings or factory style. And the, and the end plug with the O-ring. So regardless, I would at least do that because uh, that can save a lot of headaches down the road as well. Uh, okay, so let me get a little closer here. I'm gonna show you the contents of this kit. We're basically gonna be changing the entire pressure regulator valve setup. Uh, I have an, uh, I think like an anti-rattle uh, uh, TCC valve. I'll get the exact name of that. And then we have the O-ring end plug for the pressure regulator valve and the solenoid uh, feed screen, which I'm gonna give you a shot of the old one because this thing's all loaded up with crap. So this is located behind the manual valve and the valve body. And if that screen gets clogged, you can have like second gear starts, no line rise. So it's very important that that gets checked and even changed. All right, so I have um, the old and the new one, but the shift kit gives you a different style one. Uh, that we're going to be installed. Uh, all right, so I guess that's about it. So let me get a little closer, and then we'll start from step one. Uh, what I did already, one of the things that they wanted you to do was is uh, drill out the drain back hole. And then I already did that. And I says, oh, you know what? I can probably film this. 
uh, we can install this kit together. So that's already done, but that's the only thing that's done. <clears throat> but that's not a big deal. I'll give you the drill sizes that they recommend and just drill right through the drain back hole. And I also uh, uh, wanted to uh, have a new bushing in there as well. Uh, okay, so let me get a little closer and we'll start with the installation of this shift kit. Okay, so that is the kit that I use on the 480E by Superior. And we'll start installing this kit. And this fits all 1991 through 2010. They also say that you can install this kit if the transmission is still in the car. All right, some steps I guess you could do, some you cannot do. All right, so step one, they want you to drill the drain back passage a quarter inch to 932, which I did. I did a quarter inch. It's a pretty small drain back hole, but I just take the drill, go right through it, and that is done. Now, another thing that they want you to do, but maybe it doesn't have it on the early on the early pumps, if you can see this notch right here, if it doesn't have it, they want you to grind into that to make it what it looks like now. Uh, maybe that's uh, possibly for lube purposes or something. All right, it's step two. If your pump does not have the taper and the crescent, grind the taper as illustrated. So that would be that would be this right here. All right, so now step three, um, as far as knocking in the pump bushing, you know, this probably goes for like really early pumps. I got a couple of notches here that are in the pump to stake the pump bushing. So if it doesn't have that, they would want you to um, maybe take a file and grind a couple of notches so you can stake the pump bushing to keep that from walking. All right, now step four, we're gonna replace the entire pressure regulator assembly, all right? And this new regulator setup gives full-time loop. All right, so here is the old one. This is the old one here. And here is the boost valve. You know, again, this is uh, a lot of wear. You know, it's very common for this to wear out and cause a very high line pressure. And here is the O-ring, uh, here is the end plug that's at the end of that, that this uh, likes to leak. And here is the new setup that we're gonna be installing. So here is the boost valve, okay? And then we have this uh, washer here with a shoulder on it that's gonna go here. All right, we have a bumper spring that's gonna go here and then the valve itself. So the setup is going to look like that. All right, so let's move this. And the O ring. Okay, here is the O ring end plug. So I'm going to actually put this in first. a little piece sticking up, you know, so you got to hammer it in, so that's going to go on the inside. And we'll just hammer that down. And now I want to seat that uh, plug against the roll pin. Okay. All right, and then we can install the valve here. this so all this stays together. Then we've got to push on it and put the snap in.
little tuck coming out. The original one. There is the snap ring, so we gotta get this thing down and put the snap ring in. Just a little lip there, so now this is actually even a little springy. I'm going to squeeze the clip, push it down. And that's it. We can actually air check the valve. Good. You know, if the clip rotates, uh, you can push down on this and rotate the clip. Okay, he's in. All right, so if you blow air through this hole right here, it would make the valve move. And that's how I also check to see if this end plug is leaking. I fill it up with oil, I put air through that hole, and if it's leaking, it's all going to come out here. So let me just get my. Um, my air gun, and um, we'll just air check that real quick. Just give me one one second. Okay. All right, so I'm going to blow air through this hole here. And you can hear the valve moving. So that's good. Nice and free now. Okay, so uh, this portion is done. Um, another thing that I like to do with this, but it's, you know, it's just the way I am, there's um, a few of the valves in here, TCC valves and stuff. I pull the valves out, uh, but it's a little tricky. You know, if you have experience, fine. If not, you know, as long as they're free, just clean it up real good. Because uh, I put this in my wash tank and, and like to wash everything up. Uh, so this is good to go. Okay, that went right in. Okay, the pump body is good to go. All right, the next thing we're going to do Okay, so that was step number four. All right, step number five is we're going to drill the separator plate. All right, so they give you options. The, the normal, normal use, I uh, use the 76,000 drill bit and the 41,000 drill bit to drill the plate. And for heavy duty, they want you to drill more holes. And I believe the 96,000 drill bit is included. Um, the only one that's not included is when you drill the drain back hole. But when they say heavy duty, that's like maybe for towing purposes. This is not really going to do that. So we're just going to drill hole C and hole D. OK, so let's locate. Uh, hole D is down here. It's a it's an actual feed hole for uh, the solenoids. And C hole C. All right. So you have the large hole, right? If you can see that, and then a little one right next to it is the one we're going to drill. All right. So for that, we're going to use the seventy. Six thousand drill bit uh, for normal use. Uh, yeah, seventy-six. Okay, so they give you the drill bit. Let me just measure this thing. Make sure. Yes. Okay. Right, so that's it. Again, that was this one here. Okay? And of course, we're 
going to file it flat. Has a little uh, has a little lip on it here, but not too bad. All right, the other one with the forty one thousandths drill bit. I can't fit it in. My drill doesn't close all the way like that, so I have this little thing with the drill bit on the end. And let me just point this uh, down a little bit. And it's going to be this hole. I don't even know if you can see it, but it's this hole right where my finger is, right there. So this, All right. okay, okay, that's that one. Back in on the early ones. And like, uh, you know, going back to the 90s, if you had these four lady E's, um, you know, having, having issues uh, shifting or setting codes like 39 or 64 or something like that, yeah, the two solenoid, uh, for the solenoid feeds, uh, they only want you to drill one out on the shift kit, but there's two of them. And as a standard procedure, we used to drill those out because sometimes they would get closed up, restricting the oil on, on the early ones. Okay, so. Um, all right, we drilled that, and I'll make sure that this here gets uh, filed flat and both holes uh, that we drilled. Okay, so that's good. <clears throat> okay, now we're going to do the ship solenoid feed filter. It is going to be step number six, and that is located right behind the manual valve. All right, so this is the one that came out. I mean, this thing is is really bad and this would be a new one to go in but the shift kit uh, gives you one okay so I'm gonna turn this this way all right let me bring it down a little more so you guys could see all right so we got a couple of plugs here all right there's another o-ring pen plug all right, and this plug has like little legs on it. So the legs are gonna face out. So it's gonna go in this way. <clears throat> All right, so let's see, we're gonna get some grease. We need these O-rings, you know, really to seat in place to make sure that this goes back far enough. All Solenoid screen. Well, let's put this in first, and I'll show you the solenoid screen for the EPC, which is inside the valve. Well, not inside, but that's also with an O ring. Okay, so this we're gonna push back until it seats. All right, now the screen. Go this way. Now it's gonna actually go really can only go in one way for it to go in how, how it's supposed to. Okay, all right, so that is back all the way. So it has like a small, uh, uh, one end is smaller and the other one is, is slightly larger, so the smaller end will go in first. Then we're gonna grease up this end plug. I'm going to get this pair so we can put the roll pin. Okay. And then roll pin. All right. And this is the, again, the old end plug and the screen so this is yeah they made the screen in two pieces because this is the piece that we put in the metal plug uh with the legs is the like the end of the screen okay uh all right so that is done 
Pretty easy to put in this kit. All right, now I'm going to turn it over and go to step seven. All right, now they want you to remove the TCC solenoid. Okay, and install the new valve, and that is the anti-shutter valve. And then we put, drop that in with the original spring. Okay, so here is the original setup. And I'm going to use the original spring. So that is the valve and spring. Okay. So that is going to go. That is going to go here. EPC solenoid goes here. Okay. Valve is nice and free. like for towing, you would drill out that plate the way they want you to, and also there is an option to change the spring on the accumulator valve uh, to a, you know, the, the one in the kit, but again, I don't do that because this really isn't considered heavy duty, and I think what they do consider heavy duty again is for towing. All right, here is the EPC screen. Might as well install this with you guys. Okay, and that is going to sit right in. Just push that down. That's it. Okay, and the manual valve. Of course, once that screen is in, you know, manual valve will go right in. Okay. So pretty much um, uh, the shift kit is, is installed because uh, this is a later one. And then there's a couple of extra steps um, that, you can, that you can go through. Um, they, if, you wanted to, if you have a late case or an early case, you can drill uh, um, a hole through the stand and said you can use any valve body that you would like. I don't really, that's not an option. I don't really like to do that. And if you have an early valve body uh, for the EPC, you'd have to drill like a vent. And this has it, because the EPC solenoid goes here, and this is kind of like the vent right here. But if this is closed, then they just want you to drill something uh, in this area uh, for, let's see, uh, a bleed. It's a bleed, a bleed hole, a bleed slot. All right, also on the valve body, I mean, the actuator feed limit valve is done already. And again, this is the uh, Transgo kit. And it comes with, I think, like three or four valves. It comes with the reamer. I mean, it's just a great kit uh, to use. I put the reamer on the drill and, and go right through. Also on uh, the 480 ease because of these things are generally used in, in you know, big trucks, road service trucks, and these guys say, oh, it's got some, you know, road miles on it or heavy miles on it. I pull every valve out. Uh, it's fairly simple to do, and I like to wash up just the casting, get it nice and clean, and these valves just drop right back in. Uh, and this would be the spring if you want, for the accumulator valve, if you wanted to do it for heavy duty use, which again, I do not do that. Uh, there's no need for that, uh, for what I put the kits in for. All right, and I think that's about it on this, on this uh, shift kit install. You know, it's a nice, easy kit to do. It's quick. Uh, let's see, anything else? Uh, I'll give you one other tip while I got you here. <clears throat> so this is the forward clutch hub, and this is the washer for the forward clutch hub to direct drum. All right, this is plastic. I like to change this to metal. So I always uh, replace that. But again, that's just my preference. And just, you know, the bushings are, are a bit of a problem. I like to replace the bushings uh, on these 4L80Es. 
And uh, I guess that's about it. So what we did is we installed this superior shift kit on this 4L80E for this 05 Chevy truck. Um, I guess that's about it uh, for the install. So I thank you guys for watching. Have a great day, and we'll see you next one. Oh, also, uh, before I go, you know, with these, as far as these solenoids go, these shift solenoids, you know, they've been updated a few times. So, uh, as a standard procedure, I would always change the shift solenoids on the 4L80E. Right, so working on another 4L80E, I'm having a run on these transmissions lately, and of course, I'm doing another shift kit. And this is the pump, this is the pressure regulator valve. So this is the end plug and the pressure regulator valve is behind this. And this is what, uh, what is part of the kit you put an O-ring, an O-ringed end plug in because this tends to leak. And this one actually is leaking. And the last couple that I had, I've been trying to uh, get it so I can show you guys and they really didn't leak even though it wasn't an O-ring end plug. Uh, but this one is leaking pretty good. So before I go ahead and continue with the shift kit, I just wanted to show you uh, what happens uh, when uh, the o-ring when the I'm sorry the end plug does leak so I'm gonna put some fluid in here and now I'm gonna air check I'm gonna blow some air uh, through the orifice that would move the pressure regulator valve of course to simulate oil pressure and this is and just watch the um, the bubbles come up So that is one of the main reasons why we put the end plug there. Um, of course, if the oil gets lost uh, or leaks out, the pressure regulator valve can become unbalanced. So I just wanted to show you guys, I finally got one leaking. Now I'm going to continue, put the new setup in, put the O-ring end plug in, and continue with the shift kit. All right, so I just wanted to show that to you guys. Uh, thank you for watching. Have a great day, and we'll see you next one.